clips right. to do that. And that's the thing that 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 happens. And when you're when you're starting in this business, you have to be in a situation where you pretend that your career is like a monopoly board. And all again, right. going back to what we talked about, I'll before, take all four railroads. Great. Going back to what we talked about before, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't matter it doesn't <laughs> matter what happened yesterday. <laughs> we use the bad. The bad can't stop laughing. Why did it make you laugh so hard? <laughs> oh, face when you said it. Man. Now, I, <laughs> now I can never play a Monopoly with you because you'll be like, "I'll take Reading Railroad." I'll be like, "Ah!" I just want the get out of, get out of jail free card. Of course you do. Why wouldn't you? you fucking degenerate. <laughs> so anyway. So your career is like a monopoly board. So again, playing to that thing we talked about, the Oscar or the homeless guy thing, you might have played the game Monopoly yesterday or a week ago and got your ass kicked, or you might have won the game. But the point is today, you podcast, whatever, you start anew and you got a new monopoly board. And so let's say you're a comic. Radio show, entirely new board. New board. It's not even Monopoly anymore. It's something that, else. That's it's right. risk. Life. Yeah. Life. So, so let's say you're a person doing anything. Let's say you're a comic and you get your first television appearance. Let's say it's just a, a small thing on Comedy Central. Well, that's one house on the board. You're still looking out at your career saying, shit, man, I'm, I'm losing this game. But then you get that next thing. Uh, let's say you get a, a Marvin's Gardens. Marvin's Gardens, or let's say you have a guest set on a television series, or let's say you got Baltic. that first gig where you're headlining. Electric Company. And all of a sudden, you look out on that Monopoly board of your career, and you start seeing things. Oh and shit! And Park Place up in this bitch. And you're starting to win, and then you got the podcast and 13, 14 million people. Then you get the radio show or whatever it is, or you get an acting gig, and all of a sudden you have all the pieces on the board, and you're winning. But it's hard to see in the beginning when you start because it's it's scary because you're you're you have nothing there you have nothing, and when you started the podcast, I imagine one of the fears was of starting or you might have started early, but I can't speak for you. Is the fear is what the fuck is this? Is this gonna? I mean, is this gonna be inspiring? Is this gonna even be? Am I gonna have fun? Or is it gonna be a great experience? Is it gonna? Am I gonna go out and our yeah, people? Is, no, is nobody sure. gonna? Is nobody gonna listen to me? Yeah. But you fought through that feeling, and you looked in the mirror and you said, "Hey, you know what? I'm putting myself out there because I believe what I have is going to take me to the next level." The radio show is an amazing example of. I mean. You start the radio show. You have sixty. Have to replace Jim Rome. You have to replace Jim Rome. Who, who the for the f- for the casual listener to this show and to radio shows, it, it's as if Rush. You got to imagine in sports talk radio, Rush Limbaugh leaving, and they like a company now has to decide. I'm giving complete kudos to Jim Rome. He was the absolute king of this. Let me put it. So, like, if Jay Leno thing. leaves, who the hell is going to take right. this chair? It was like the Jay Leno of. Sports, Sports talk radio. radio. Fifteen years a guy's on that slot. Number one, number one, number, number one, one, number one. And then he leaves. And you come on. And again, this is what was amazing about you. And again, you, we've never verbalized this. You never talked about it. But I truly believe this is the case, which is one of the things I, I love about you and your talent. Is We're going along, Matt. He's complimenting me. Go ahead. You can edit it. You can edit out some stuff. Why would I edit out nice things about me? You went into this gig... There was not a shadow of a fucking doubt that you were going to win. You know, Bobby Knight used to have this great expression, and I, I'm sorry I keep relating to the sports. Most people have the will, will to, to win. win. Few people have, have the will, the to, will prepare to prepare to win. To win. Yeah. 14 fucking years you were guest hosting that show, preparing to win. Yeah. So when you got that opportunity... There wasn't a shadow of a doubt that you weren't going to win. Not even a mo. There's not even a second. Like I said at the beginning of the show, and all ties back. You're at the radio show. Do you have a thing that it's going to go away? Do you have a thought? And you said, No, I have no thought that's going to go away. And here you go with that level of confidence, with not cockiness, confidence. You go into the job and you 
create a problem. You give performances, and so all of a sudden, everybody. I'm talking to these presidents of these radio stations and Clear Channel. They're like everybody's talking about you in the hallways. They can't believe it. There's people. There's radio hosts that are coming in and are are nervous about things because you're doing so well. People are coming into their offices saying, "Hey, listen, can I do my thing like Jay's doing it?" No, stay doing like you're doing it because you created something. That was special. You went from 60 syndicated affiliates. Now you're at 125 in, in seven, a month. In, what is it? A month or yeah, six Yeah, we doubled weeks, it in a month, yeah. Which is Dan Patrick, the first year he was on, had 65 stations. Yeah. Nick DiPaolo and Artie Lang, I think, have 11. I, I, they might have in all 18. fairness, they're on at 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, so is Vic the Brick. Failing you! Not Vic the Brick, JT, JT the, the Brick, Brick. sorry. Right. And he has 270 or 250. It's creating the problem, and America speaks. And when it comes to Artie Lang and Nick DiPaolo, and I love Artie Lang and Nick DiPaolo. Look, they're also on... It, I, I, it doesn't I'm gonna, matter I'm gonna, if you're I'm gonna, on a... Th- it's not a matter if you're an infomercial It's not a time a th- thing. I'm going to tell you what it is with Nick and Artie. Uh, you know, those are my boys, and I'm going to speak I up I love them. them. I know you do, and I, I need people to know I do, and I need people to know why. When you go to Fox Sports Radio, you're insured 50 markets because it's a Fox Sports Radio station. So when Nick and Artie took their deal, in all fairness, that's like a direct TV weird situation where like you have to win stations over. I went in knowing, I'm all right, I'm a Cadillac dealership, and if I sign up with this dealership company, I know I'm going to have Cadillac dealerships in 50 cities. You know, Jerry, I don't know why I had to make an analogy. You know, a you know Jerry and Ray had to win people over on NBC and CBS and shitty time slots, and they did. And so, again, America speaks. And if they're doing the right thing and if they're doing what America... Maybe they don't want to do what America wants to rally around. Maybe that's their lane. But the point is is that you are doing something. And then we're going to just talk quickly, fine. which ahead. is interesting about what you said about the Chinese waiter routine and the Vietnamese thing. And I'm listening. This is this but is Kats, I, We need to talk about something that's really important, and that is that March 15th, I'm going to be at the South Point Hotel in <laughs> Las Vegas. March 16th. I'm going to be at the South Point Hotel in Las Vegas. You mean not at the horse? March, no, no, no. March 17th, South Point Hotel in Las Vegas. 15th, 16th, 17th of March. Warrior, Warriors Unite. Come see me in Vegas. Make a roadie. March 15th, 16th, and 17th, South Point Hotel in Las Vegas. You were saying something nice about me. Go on. Yes, I am. <laughs> and I'm saying something about, you know, a lot of people get bummed out when they say, hey, well, this person's doing the nail salon routine and and this and I did this particular routine and then Buddy Hackett did that. Or they'll say something like, well, you know, that comic did this bit and I do a bit similar. The thing about um, the business, which is fascinating, and I, I don't what know. What business is that? Show business? business? Show business. Right. And, Monkey business? Is that I, I had a meeting with Virgin... Uh, produced, which is the Virgin oh. Airline brand. Maddie's eyes lit up. I had a meeting and, with Virgins, and um, you're meeting with you know all these people, Richard Branson's, you know all these people. And I I got in the meeting, and I I I said to them, I said I have to tell you this story. I remember the first time I experienced your brand. I was walking through an airport terminal. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I hear this cool rock and roll music, and I look down, and there's the lights are dimmed. It looks like it's fluorescent. I start walking closer. I see these white counters that are gloss lacquer. I see Mac computers checking in. I see gorgeous flight attendants with these beautiful retro outfits. I see people walking away with their red tickets that's a different size, and it was the Virgin terminal I, I i said to them i said i said to myself when i walked there i said is this legal and, <laughs> and and they laughed and one of the things that richard branson says and said which plays into what he said you know it is legal and people still get on a plane they sit down they fly across the country they get off i'm not changing air travel I'm just adjusting it and creating a better experience around that format. 
And so when somebody does, let's say, Tina Fey writes 30 Rock. Well, if you analyze 30 Rock, it's the Mary Tyler Moore show. She's Mary, Alec Baldwin is Lou Grant, and Tracy Morgan is Ted Knight. You don't shit on Tina Fey because it's got similarities to Mary Tyler Moore show. <laughs> it's She took a, a formula yeah. and made it something special, relevant to today. And that's the thing about your radio show. Your radio show is unlike any radio show, sports radio show in the country. There's no show even remotely like it. But you still go in. You're still ranting on a microphone. You're still taking the same breaks. But you created something that was more enjoyable around the formula of radio. And that's what takes things to the next level. And that's why America speaks. And that's why Virgin is one of the most popular airlines in the world. That's why your radio show is approaching number one. I only that's added why one com- thing. What did I add? Uh, you added fun. It's a party. That's it. All I added was fun. I looked at the dial. Because I am the P1. As they say in radio, you're P1s. That's Explain your number. Explain the P1 to people. A P1 is when you're in corporate. They go, my man, you're P1. That's your number one listener. He listens eight minutes a day. He's driving around Altadena in a Camaro. He reads on an eighth grade level. And he's 41-year-old white man that slaps his wife. And I'm like, all right, well, I was the P, I was the P1, and I listened to sports talk radio. And the one thing that was always missing, or wasn't missing, back in the day, used to be so much fun, and it just gotten so buttoned down. And it's like Mike and Jeff, Matt and Barry, Barry and Jay. Now Jay, turn the dial. Jay and Barry, Jay and Matt, Matt and Jay. It's just the same. It's two names and fucking wacky guy. Matt, Jay, and flip flop. You know, <laughs> Barry and Matt with treadmill. <laughs> Barry, Matt, and Fatso. It's the slobs. It's just the same shit all the time. Rape kitten crawl space <laughs> with spice rack on weather. It's the same thing. And it's like whatever the local team is, we're gonna beat it into the ground. And it's st- statistics, statistics, and it's uh, sports talk radio and talk radio is all hypotheticals. You take something, you listen to Sean Hannity, you listen to Rush Limbaugh, you listen to sports talk radio, you listen to Dan Patrick, you listen to me, you take something that happened. You take the Lakers beating the Blazers, or you take the Jets and Tim Tebow, you take something that actually happened. And you go in 40 different directions of what could happen from the fact. I wanted to minimize the hypotheticals because it's absurd to me and it's not real. And when I wanted to put a light on what was real and like Herman Edwards says says in the beginning of this podcast, put your name on it and be the guy that says – This is bullshit. Guys shouldn't have to go to college for one year. You're not fooling anybody. You can barely fucking speak English. (laughs) And you got a goddamn, you know, you got you got a a full scholarship to go to Louisville and made me feel great, you know, and you can't even fucking talk. How about you don't make guys go to college? (laughs) There's already cautionary tales like Fab Mello. Or he, you know, like guys like Corleone Young and Sebastian Telfair, but there's also guys like Amare Stoudemire, guys like Kevin Garnett that are hu- LeBron James didn't go to college; they're just beasts. So let the NBA franchises buyer beware. Don't take a scholarship from my kid who maybe may do something with stem cell research or figure out a way how to keep a satellite in the sky longer and not have damages done to it by fucking meteor showers then give it to some guy whose pants are around his fucking ankles holding his dick trying to fuck co-eds because he's going to get 18 game uh, 18 points a game you know i interview guys that literally can't fucking speak english i'm not going to name any names I'm not going to put my name on that. I don't think you should name. talk about David Stern that way. Oh, he was, that was hard, <laughs> but I got him. But it's like it enrages me that these guys get free rides to go to college when there's people out there listening to this very program right now. They're listening to this podcast who kids are like B students and your B student is not going to get a scholarship to Louisville. He's not going to get a scholarship or she won't get a scholarship to Rutgers because you got to get straight A's, get a free. I'm talking free. You don't pay for a fucking book. And then when you're done not paying for your books, you're going to meet some old man who's going to give you a handshake and there's a hundred 
$100 bill in the handshake. Hey, way to go. How about, hey, way to go on that science project you did? And the argument is all the time, as you know, yeah, but your kid's not selling out that arena. Your kid's not throwing touchdown passes every Saturday and selling out Ann Arbor, Michigan, the huge stadium in Ann Arbor that holds 110,000 people. If your kid's a Tom Brady star quarterback, yeah, but you know what? 